Hey guys, welcome back to My Time to Fly. I come to you today from my messy garage here in Michigan, and I'm coming with a little bit of an ask. An ask for some help, some advice, some direction, as I make some decisions with my ownership partner about what we do with the Mooney. You see, our missions are always changing. Uh, both my partner and I uh, would like to really pursue IFR flying. And our airplane, although IFR capable, isn't up to today's standards, let's say, and has one big problem. You might guess what that problem is, especially if you're involved in the Mooney community. Um, if you have guesses, put them down below. Of course, I'm gonna tell them to you here in just a second. Um, but what I'd really like for you to comment below is what direction you might take this if you were in the same position. So I'm really gonna talk about what upgrades we might need to make to get this plane into a better IFR condition such that we can pursue, pursue that, uh, that certification. So, as many of you know who've watched the channel, um, it's a 1963 Mooney with a KLN 94 GPS, non WAS, right? And uh, pretty much steam gauges after that. And they all work uh, except one. And I don't even know that you would call it a steam gauge. The one thing that doesn't work right now is our compass. That may sound like such a simple problem, but I'll tell you over the past few days, it's become clear to me that it's just not so simple to solve in the Mooney. Uh, of course, the Mooney is made with a steel chassis, steel frame, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it, a roll cage, if you will, around uh, the empennage, and ours is magnetized. Now, that sounded crazy to me when I first heard that uh, these roll cages can be magnetized and that it can um, mess with your uh, your compass. Can you know that magnetic field will, will interfere with your compass? And it's crazy to me because I come from a world of tool manufacturing. That's what I do for a living, um, hand tool manufacturing, and we have standards around magnetization, right? We monitor it. We understand what is and isn't magnetized. And by all rights, our plane isn't magnetized by my tool manufacturing brain. But there's a huge difference between how much magnetization impacts a compass versus how much you can actually feel uh, in a tool or picking up, uh, using magnetization to pick something up. Maybe it's magnetism, I don't know, I'm not that smart. So anyways, I'll quit saying it so I don't get it wrong. But anyways, now we're, we're really having a struggle getting our compass to work because of this magnetic interference. Uh, we've made progress for the longest time. I should, maybe I shouldn't even say these things, but for the longest time, the compass was way off. If you look at some of my videos, you'll probably see it. We've, we've made progress. The compass is less off than it is but it's definitely not within the 10 degree limit. And we've tried and tried. We've used a couple different degaussing coils, they're called. One that I have at work that's quite large and a smaller unit. Uh, we've torn apart the airplane a little bit to get to new locations with little to no success. <laughs> Again, it's a little better than it was, but not nearly where it needs to be uh, for that compass to work. We've tried a vertical card compass, no success there. Uh, we've tried remounting the compass into the instrument panel, uh, the compass that is was on board our airplane uh, is still um, when we bought it, just a whiskey, uh, you know, the old whiskey compass. It uh, it fits in a hole, right, a, a hole for the instrument panel. We put it in there to try and get it away from interference and made it better, but not good enough. Um, so now. We're trying to decide what to do. And a wise man always told me, one wise man in particular from the, he told me this actually during my first flying lesson when I was 17, I'll never forget it. 15, when I was 15, and I'll never forget it. He said, let somebody else pay for the upgrades by the airplane after that. Well, now we're really contemplating doing that differently. 
So I've got a few options. I want to, I'll talk about them real quick. And really, I want to keep this short. I'd love it if you left a comment down below um, and shared this with some of your friends and asked them to leave a comment too. What would you do? We've got a, like I said, a 1963 Mooney that is valued somewhere between 50 and $60,000, depending on the buyer and what have you. It's pretty basic. You can look back through my other videos. I'll put a video up here somewhere, I don't know, up there, of, uh, you know, running down the instrument panel if you want to check it out. It, it's unchanged from when we bought it. Um, so we've got this airplane worth fifty to $60,000 and we're contemplating, I guess, a few things. One, you could sell the airplane. You just sell it outright. You could do that and take that money and reinvest it into a plane that has all of the things that we wish to have for IFR flying. Things like a WASP GPS coupled to an autopilot, um, you know, no vacuum system anymore, G5s or GI-275s or some, you know, newer electronic system um, to alleviate the need for our older technology. It, let's just say, perfect world, we got a $60,000 or ish for the airplane and we could find one, uh, maybe even a better, a different model, a J model or, you know, something a little bit bigger, uh, Mooney that uh, had everything we wanted, maybe it was 120,000. So that's a $60,000 investment to get there. Uh, but very candidly, I don't have 60 grand or even half of that. So maybe we would have to partner up with a couple more people and reinvest um, into a little bit more capable airplane. I guess that's option number one, sell, partner up, buy something bigger. The second option is, uh, to just make a small change to the, uh, a smaller change, I'll call it, to the airplane and put in a G5 or something similar with a remote mounted magnetometer that would give us accurate readings um, and maybe placard our, um, our whiskey compass saying that it's not within 10 degrees you know, get by there. We would not upgrade anything else on the airplane. We wouldn't upgrade, um, you know, the GPS or any of those things. We would fly by hand. We have no autopilot. So we'd just fly IFR by hand and get our ratings that way and uh, and continue on. I I'm just guessing that's somewhere in the five to $7,000 range to, to do that installation, you know, the purchase and installation of those avionics. Or there's something, I guess, more in the middle. Um, we've talked about maybe moving to a unit like an Aspen, which then helps, you know, provide a platform to be able to couple into, you know, things um, like uh, GPS, probably not our GPS because it's so old, but um, couple into our GPS and maybe bring some navigation right over in front of us. And I, I think it brings a host of other opportunities like uh, synthetic vision and, you know, you name it, a bunch of other stuff. So those are a few of the things we've been talking about. Or I guess the last option, I'll, I'll call it option number four in my head is uh, remain VFR. <laughs> Just keep doing what we're doing. Now, I don't think any of us wanna get stagnant in aviation. Of course, we want to continue to grow and do things better and have more fun and you know whatever. Uh, but it is an option, right? And one that maybe should be considered. So anyways, I just thought I'd hop on here real quick, ask your opinion and thoughts. Uh, you know, consider it. What would you do if this was your money? Uh, you guys know I've tried to be really candid about, you know, what we're, what we have into the airplane and, uh, you know, the money it costs to own it and run it and what we spend. And uh, this is a fork in the road, right? It's time to make some decisions. Uh, we all know that putting money into airplanes is not easy. It, it, it's maybe easy to do, but you don't get it all back out of it. And, uh, when you gotta put a little money into it, it's a lot of money, let's just be honest. Like there's no cheap fixing airplanes. So uh, do me a favor, leave that comment, uh, hit, a, hit the like button so maybe some more people see it and they can leave a comment as well. And uh, let's see what the community says. Can't guarantee that's what we'll do. The old pocketbook will make the decision sometimes for us and, uh, and uh, we'll move on and see if we can't get flying. The airplane's been down for a couple of weeks now as we tried to solve this. Uh, issue and well that's not acceptable either it's time to get back up in the air uh, in this beautiful fall michigan weather so thanks again for being here and we'll talk to you all real soon